The best kind of doors are the doors you have to explain. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Unhinged, where door hardware nerds get together and we knock and slam on different door fells. We learn, we laugh, and sometimes we even cry, but we laugh to keep ourselves from crying because some of these door fells are a Atrocious? Is that even a word now? Atrocious? Today, we do have a very special guest, Bryce Self. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. We're excited to have you on here and share your unique insight. Why don't you hop on and say hello? Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the industry. Thanks for having me. I don't know why you guys decided to have me on. Uh, number one, after Gary, who's you know just got a ton of knowledge and just been doing this for quite some time. So following him up is going to be very difficult. And then also is like my claim in how I get into a lot of buildings is actually not through door hardware. And I probably don't even know 50% of the terminology of like door hardware to begin with. I do a lot of social engineering. Like I love the people stuff. My dad was a sales guy. He's always been a sales guy. And I just kind of got that from him and, you know, selling somebody on something. And then, you know, you go into the military and you learn some cool stuff and how, kind of how to manipulate and deceive people. And then you kind of fine tune it there. So I just kind of went in that direction. But yeah, I'm glad to be here. So yeah, I'm Bryce Self. So I started a company called Fortified Solutions where I do basically physical penetration testing and wireless penetration testing. Basically, I physically break into people's buildings, whether it's through social engineering methods, uh, lock picking, stealing people's badges, cloning badges, what have you, and then also hacking people's wireless access points to basically find all the vulnerabilities I can and then advise them on how they can fix those. I got asked a question, I think on another podcast was like, hey, how did you get into this? Like, were you kind of a nefarious kid? And I was like, no, I don't think so. But then I was like, kind of thinking, about, I was like, yeah, man, I actually broke into a lot of places and I'm not trying to like self-incriminate, but you know, you're just kids, right? I mean, you get into like the public school, the public pool and you know, all this other stuff. And, you know, I'd always like to play in the woods and, you know, play army man and all that stuff. So I think a lot of this, like being outside, you know, talking to people, getting into places, I think it really came from that. But like I said, I joined the Navy over a decade ago and I ended up joining their computer hacker pipeline, I guess. So I didn't know what a CPU was. So I went the cyber route and they were like, oh man, it's this really cool job and you'll get paid and you'll get ranked quicker. And I was like, cool, sign me up. I want to get out the house. I was actually waiting tables at the time, going to community college, couldn't afford the book, but I could afford the class. And then obviously they're like, Hey, homework on page 70. And I didn't have a page 70. So uh, I ended up dropping out. And so I was like, all right, I got to do something. So I joined the Navy and did that. I wanted to be a Navy SEAL, man. I wanted to be American and do all that cool stuff. And I did get to do some really cool stuff. A lot of stuff with what they do as well, like training and whatnot. But I got turned down because my eyesight was bad. So I ended up doing the cyber stuff, which was really cool. And obviously how I got here. So I basically went the cyber path. I did my A school, if you will, where I just kind of learned the basics of computer network operations, attack, defense, exploitation, that kind of thing. And then you come out of that and you realize that you don't know anything at all. You know, especially when you go against your peers, you're like, oh, I know everything about computers. And they're like, no, you don't. And you're like, yeah, I don't. So from there, you can go a couple different directions, I guess, in the pipeline. I think a lot has changed now since I've been in. So, you know, this could be old information, but basically you can go like the crazy Uber hacker route and take it much further. You can go kind of a support route and help those guys out. And then you can kind of go a unique direction, go the tactical route, if you will. And so that's kind of the direction I went in the tactical route. And that's where a lot of that, let's just say social engineering, uh, lock manipulation, picking that kind of stuff really came in and then obviously meshing the two together with the cyber and the in the physical stuff counter surveillance that kind of stuff really plays into the physical pen test stuff i didn't know that's what it was at the time if you will until i basically got out of the navy and i hit a buddy up it was one of my mentors in the navy i said hey can you just look at my resume he was doing cyber stuff at the time he was like well i'll actually give you a job because we need you to come down here and do some stuff so i you know went private and, and did that for a little bit and then we had some clients asking for physical pen tests and that was like well, I know how to do all that stuff. So yeah, let's give it a whirl. And then here we are, you know, 100% success rate and broke into uh, federal banks and skyscrapers and downtown New York, Chicago. The one in Puerto Rico was cool. That is amazing. They should have like a movie after your story there. Like, I hope not. There'd be that's... a lot of disappointed people. So Bryce, I've got kind of a nerdy question to ask you. You know, we're the door hardware nerds. What is one of the most door hardware nerdiest things you've done? And I know you manipulate with locks or you penetrate locks. I, that's only a small aspect of what you actually do. But like, do you have like a story that pops to mind of like, what's the nerdiest thing you've done? So I hit this federal bank twice in two different years, both cool stories. But the first one was I was just would kind of sneak past the front desk. I say sneak past is we dressed up as employees. We hit them on a night where the local NFL team had a home game. So that way everyone 
either be watching at home or they would be at the game. Yeah, exactly. Right. So trying to minimize the amount of people, they would probably put either the non-football fan as the security person or the lowest cost resource, maybe. Or, so, or the security guy is like this on his phone, right? Like he's watching the game, right? Like hundred <laughs> percent. The second time, actually, we did it. The front desk person was actually sleeping when we came up to him. But this first time she was pretty vigilant and came prepared though. So, we, you know, trying to go past her and we're just kind of talking as if it's like this emergency. We go up to the turnstiles. Mind you, we don't have a badge that works. So we go through and she's like, hey, excuse me. And then I'm like, oh, sorry. And then we show her these fake badges that we made from the pictures of employee badges that we saw. And it was good enough where she sees it and she goes, oh, okay, you're good. And then, you know, we go past and set off all these alarms. She's like, no, it's fine. You're good. You know, it's like, oh, okay, great. And then from there, we were able to, you know, basically pick the lock. You get off the elevator on every single floor and then you have, you know, the place where you have the badge in. So able to basically bypass those. I think I did the rec sensor, do the compressed air, right? To get past yeah. maybe or slip the latch or something, regardless, able to get on there onto that floor. And then I say this, the nerdiest thing, because it's the most impactful thing for the most part that I've come across. So get onto that floor. And then I see basically this terminal, this computer for all of our non-cyber people that's sitting by itself at this desk. Mind you, the rest of them are inside cubicles and everything, but this one's just like right here. So I'm like, what's going on with this? Go up through it, shake the mouse. I noticed the password's already on the screen on the sticky note, but you know, jiggle the mouse and it's unlocked. Mind you, it's a federal bank. And it says, put in your account and routing information. And then here's how much you can transfer over. And it had a ton of commas in there. And it says, just transfer however much you want. So I literally could have just put in my bank information right there and just sent over millions. And then my wife's like, well, why? I don't understand. Why didn't you do it? I'm like, do you really want me in jail? I don't like, she asked me all the time. And she tells all, you know, all of her friends, it's like, oh, he's really good at, you know, getting into places and getting access to money, but he never takes anything. I'm like, how bad do you want me out of here? You know, she was like, like oh, you're I'd the worst fine. thief ever. I'd be fine. Like you, you, you'd be in trouble, but I'd yeah. be fine. I, yeah. I'd be set, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's some pretty nerdy things, right? I feel like there's a lot of hardware nerds that know a lot about hardware and then like they get into picking locks and then the under the door tool and there's mm -hmm. the rec centers and they find these little bypasses and they get into that world. And then there's social engineering, which is like a whole nother level because you have to have all that knowledge and then the personality to be able to pull it off as well. Because like if that lady didn't trust you, you wouldn't have gotten to those doors. Yeah, kind of. no, exactly. And then, and then even even then, so I talk about this a lot in my talks and training is, so we call it cover for action and cover for status. This is for all my door hardware nerds that don't know anything about this stuff. So basically you have cover for action, cover for status. Your cover for status is why you are actually going to the place. That's the overall reason you're there. So my cover for status at that time was we were employees. So obviously you have to dress like an employee. You have to carry things that an employee would carry, have responses to challenges, you know, hey, who are you? Your name might have to be on a list. Does your ID? D match the name that you say that might be on, you know, that kind of thing, right? So you have to make sure all that's good. But then not only that is, like you said, is when you get to that door and then you start manipulating the hardware and you start trying to pick it or bypass it however you want to. At that time, you have to have a cover for action. You have to have a reason for the action that you're doing. Meaning if someone comes up to you and challenges you and say, hey, you're an employee, but you're messing with this door. What's going on? You either have to think about it really quick or think about it beforehand. So yeah, it's always fun. For sure. Well, Bryce, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm excited to get your insight on these next three door fells and loved hearing a little bit more about your story and some of the nerdiest things you've done. That's great. Mia, do you want to hop on and say hello? I think you got the say hi, right? <laughs> Yeah, hello. Welcome to another episode. It's been so long since we filmed one of these. I think like September was the last time we actually filmed because we were so far ahead in filming. Yeah. And Benji and I haven't been hanging out that much virtually. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, welcome to today. Bryce, we're excited. I yeah. love it. Me too. So for those who don't know how Unhinged works, I will share my screen with a door hardware fail. We will knock and slam, we'll react, we'll throw out any helpful tips to it, and then we'll give it a knocking score. One being, it's not too knocking bad, but I get why it's a door fail. 10 being pretty knocking bad, like this needs to be addressed. Let's get someone in there to take care of it. Whether it's security, accessibility, life safety, there's a lot that has to do with door hardware. But because we've got Bryce on here, I specifically tailored the these door fails towards more like if I was looking at it from a pen testing side of the industry. So hopefully we'll have some fun and we'll go from there. Any questions? You ready, Bryce? As ready as I'll ever be. Okay. 
it looks open already. And then I see the sign, obviously, it says, don't keep it propped open. And, oh, yeah, I see it down there. Yep, it's propped open. Perfect. Love it. You can see the sunlight coming through. Yeah, the- I guess on my end, I saw the light on the bottom, right? And But then as you kind of go to the right, it kind of looks like it's the rest of the frame if that makes sense. Like it kind of blends in with the rest of the frame. So it almost looked like someone kicked in the bottom part. I've come across a couple of these. That makes your job real easy, right? Very easy. It's actually the funniest thing is like when I'm training new guys is I'll come over to them and sometimes we'll spread out. They'll go to a door out, you know, go to the door, whatever. And I'll say, hey man, how's it going over there? It's like, dude, I just can't get it. And I'll go over there and I'll be like, well, did you check to see if it was open? And they're like, what? And I just open the door and they're like, oh my gosh. I'm like, all right. You know, it's like always just check to make sure it's open. So yeah, with these, it makes it super easy. Yeah. I mean, if I was trying to break into a place, like one of the first doors I would look to is one of the back doors, like, you know, where maybe there's a person that smokes and they leave the door propped open, or usually there's a big rock or something out there that they use to like, so they can get back in. If you hang out there long enough, you're going to find an opportunity to get into the building, at least in my experience. Yeah, no, you bring up a great point. So like I will attack smokers. So, you know, again, back to cover for action, cover for status. Don't try to pose as a smoker if you've never smoked. Because, you know, smokers can tell, right? They can tell when you're a brand new smoker, you know, whatever. So yeah, you're absolutely right. So, you know, trying to go there, trying to kind of tailgate in with the smoker, smokers will prop it open and, you know, a way that they aren't supposed to, you know, you ask the company is like, hey, are they supposed to go out this back door? It's like, no, they're actually not supposed to, but they end up doing it. We can't, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, hey, it makes my job easier. One thing I will do and something I guess the the hardware nerds should look out for is I have strong magnets that are circular with the hole through it, right? Like a washer. And so I'd take a couple of those and I can't remember who I got this from. I think it was my buddy Matt at 7X. Anyway, so you take a gear tie, one of the flexible ones, right? They're kind of longer and you feed it through that stack of magnets and then you basically twist that up so you can have it on your backpack really easily accessible. And when you're going by like that smoker door in the back, if it's a metal frame, you can just stick that magnet to there. And so the gear ties will be hanging over the top of the door. And basically whenever someone opens the door at that point, whenever it closes, that gear tie is going to get in the way of it. So it's a very quick and easy way. You can just pass it real quick, slap it up there, keep moving. And then whenever someone leaves, that thing will be propped open. You just wait kind of close to be able to slip back in. So it's my own little special prop. I know people use pencils a lot. Maybe even Gary brought up the pencil thing. So yeah, I never thought about using a strong magnet and a gear type, but that makes a lot of sense. It's just kind of dynamic and it, you know, it'll allow the door to open and then whenever it, you know, tries to close, it catches it. So yeah, if you look a little closer, it looks like there's an electric strike in here as well, which I know is a love hate relationship with people because if a door is not adjusted perfectly and installed just right if it doesn't have the right face plate on it right then it's so simple to slip that auxiliary latch right that dead latch into the strike mm-hmm. and then you can use your little tool that you invented to yeah. open up <laughs> the door right like it's so simple to yep. anyone with a screwdriver or a credit card mm-hmm. could potentially open up your door in that case mm-hmm. there's also that so i got in trouble one time at a different federal bank got into their server room through that method you know i basically slipped past it and then they said i broke their door which i didn't i just you know slipped it and they just had to reset it but a lot of times with those doors i will check for dead latch to see if it is actuated or not and then it's a quick way to just basically tell it's like oh okay i can't get in that way you know really quick triage i guess but one thing to mention is like you said is like you know i'll tell this with the newer guys is if you kind of shake that door sometimes it can screw you up but you know obviously look at it first but you can you know maybe shake that door push it or pull it to get it seated all the way through so then that way you can slip it you know because maybe it is seated right but you just need that little push to get it back to where it was i can't remember i feel like i pulled it one time and then it actuated it. And then I was like, oh no. And I screwed myself out of getting into that door. So, like you were fine the first time, but then you... Yeah, went. you get into a building and uh, you start looking for doors like this. And then obviously, you know, trying to make sure people don't see you. And if they do see you and what are you going to say? And every single action that you take, every single door got to have a reason. So especially if you don't do this enough, you start getting tunnel vision where you just start focusing on the one thing. Oh, I got to get into this one door. I got to pick this, like whatever it is. And then, yeah, sometimes you'll end up kind of screwing yourself. So yeah, don't get tunnel vision. But in this case, you wouldn't even need any of that because it's propped up. 
right? Yeah, so. I would just kick it right open, real confident, <laughs> just a boot right through. No, I would. Yeah, I would definitely, definitely go in this, especially if it says don't keep it propped open. This is a door that piques my interest. I think I told a client one time, I know you said obscurity is not security, but I think I told a client one time because they had their rooms. It was like server room one or two or whatever. I was like, hey, just change it. Like, just change it. Like, make it something like water closet or something. I don't know. Just like make it something because it was like server room three. And I was like, oh, OK, yeah. Yeah, or just like, take it off, you know. I don't you're, know. you're basically just putting a big target on that door, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, take this sign off. Make sure no one props open doors. Like, make it a policy. Reward people for if the, something's propped open. Reward people for taking the prop out. You know, anything, anything to incentivize people. I should start a collection of the number of wedges that I've stolen over the years, or just like <laughs> I see a fire door propped open, and I'll just punt that wedge like as far as I can, like. Good luck finding it, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you just have a wall of, of props. That would be great. <laughs> we'll call it the wall of shame. Yeah, there, there's something there. Okay, there all is. right. Mia, what do you think about this or what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, if we're going to look at it in the traditional sense, nothing's really wrong here, right? But that's not, if, if we're looking at it from a attack sense, then obviously this is an ongoing problem that they have because there's a sign on the door. Like they need to find another solution for this. It can't be tied into a sophisticated EAC because otherwise they would be getting a door prop alarm or they're ignoring it, yeah, which is like a whole other problem. Yeah. yeah. From a traditional like hardware installation, everything looks fine, but something's wrong with the security system that they have going on. Yeah, I feel like this is more of like a training opportunity or whoever keeps on propping yeah. this door. Open. Someone needs to really talk to them about that. Yeah, yeah. check yeah. the cameras. Okay, so knocking score. I don't know if this is breaking any life safety codes or anything like that, but what do you think, Bryce? If you're going to give this a knocking score on security. And Tim being the worst, right? Yeah. I'm very analytical when it comes to this stuff. It's Traditionally, someone would be like, oh, it's a 10 because it's already open and you can just push it open. And I get that. But let's say it wasn't propped open, right? Yeah. So, you know, I think in the sense that it's open, sure, let's go 10. But then if it wasn't open, that's where I kind of like would back it down. Maybe an eight or a seven, just depending. Because, you know, I don't know if an under the door tool would work on this one because it looks pretty tight, at least on the other side. So maybe you can't get anything through, but maybe you can, right? So that would obviously increase that score. And then, like you said, with the dead latch, uh, being able to slip that. So I'm going to give it a strong eight that's a good is number. that fair yeah. right, i just want to make sure i want to make sure i'm, I'm tuned in right and, and i would agree with you like obviously a propped open door is defeating all security with it right so like in a sense that that's a 10 right there but the fact that if we took that out of the picture i'm with you like they have actually have weather stripping on the bottom which right. helps prevent attacks from underneath obviously there's other ways to attack this door with the electric strike but i mean it's an exterior door with an electric strike that's exposed i still think Think there's some vulnerabilities there so i'm with you i'll give it an eight as well do i feel like being controversial today or not yes. <laughs> Yes. We don't know what's in this building, right? So like when Gary was on and we saw that there was a wedding venue with a key in the door, mm, they're probably not going to get state secrets at a wedding venue. So we don't like, we don't know what we're protecting here, but it really is a catastrophic failure of their building security. Easy to correct, but as it stands, it's a 10. Yeah. Yeah. Even, you know, physical pin testers. I'm sure you guys probably write reports as far as how severe things are and what needs to be fixed. And that's, you know, how we do it is everyone's a little bit different. But as long as it gets the point across to get someone's, you know, feelers up and say, hey, all right, this is an issue. We need to fix it. Okay. So eight, eight and 10. Pretty knocking bad. <laughs> pretty knocking bad. <laughs> pretty yeah. knocking bad. Thank you for sticking with us for another episode of Unhinged. Our doors are always open, partially because they're unhinged.